Okay, so the crux of our discussion is this. For conservative force, potential energy is defined. For non-conservative force, it is not. Mechanical energy, potential energy plus kinetic energy is conserved in case of conservative force. For non-conservative force, it is not conserved. Cyclic work done is zero in case of conservative force. Work done, the symbol of work done, the work done is integration of small work done. It's the summation of small work done. And in a cyclic process, we represent it like this. Put a circle on the integration sign. So the cyclic work done in case of conservative force is zero. For non-conservative force, even if you bring the body to the same point, still there will be some losses that you have to compensate for and your work done will not be zero. There will be some net amount of work done in case of non-conservative force. And uh, work is recoverable as we discussed. In case of non-conservative force, work is not recoverable. Some energy is lost and that cannot be recovered. Now we'll solve quickly two simple trivial questions and then we'll move ahead. First question is A, B, C. On going from A to B, the work that you have to do is 3 joule. On going from B to C, the work that you have to do is 4 joule. And in the field, there is only conservative force, there is no non-conservative force. So the question is, how much work do you have to do on going from A to C? The math is pretty basic, there will be no prizes for answering this. The work done from going to A to C is not path dependent. You can directly go from A to C or you can go via B. So the work done will be the same. If the work done in this is 7 Joule, for this also it would be 7 Joule. Okay, pretty simple. Okay. Now we have an inclination like this 3 4 5 these are the length there's a block kept at the bottom of the inclination and very slowly so that the block doesn't gain any kinetic energy we have to push this block at the top of the inclination and the question says what is the work done for that so there would be two way of doing it one the trivial way of using the formula of the work done find the force find the displacement the other would be a smarter way because we studied something and we got to use that somewhere what we studied was did i mention this is a smooth plank if i didn't please get it now this is a frictionless smooth plank so there's no non-conservative force the force the only force that is existing here would be gravity which happens to be conservative force so the path so the work done from the bottom to the top of the inclination is the same as the work done from if, if we just name these points a b c from a to c and then c to b that would be the same on bringing the plank from a to c no work is required because in this horizontal direction there is no forces the only force that there that exists here is gravitational force which acts vertically downward so this is a smooth surface like the smica there things will move effortlessly there's still some friction here but if it is happens to be a perfectly frictionless surface things would move effortlessly so from the bringing the block from A to C, you don't have to do any work because there is no force that you have to overcome. On bringing the block from C to B, you have to do some work. The work would be the same as the amount of energy that it will gain. We know that the energy that it will gain is uh, MGH or in fact, you can use the formula of the work. The work is force into displacement. Actually, it is, we should start from here. Force dot displacement vector that is fs cos theta the force here would be upward displacement also upward so angle between them is zero cos zero is one so now it is force into displacement okay so the force that you have to apply to move it slowly would be the same as the opposing force opposing force is mg opposing force is mg and displacement would be three so three mg would be the amount of work that you have to do Okay, now let's check this. Is it right? Let's calculate the work done in, on this path without using this concept that the work done will be the same and the work done is indeed path independent. Let's check this. Okay, so how do, do we check this? The displacement is 5. Now we have to calculate what will be the force that you have to actually overcome and 
to push this block to the top of inclination. The force at any midpoint, mid region, would be acting downwards. This angle is theta. This angle will also be theta. We had enough practice of this. Now the force that you have to overcome is mg sin theta. mg cos theta will be acting perpendicular to the plane. That will be balanced by normal reaction. You have to do nothing about it. This mg cos theta and the normal reaction has nothing to do with the motion along the plane of plank because they are perpendicular to the plank. What we have to overcome is mg sin theta. We have to apply a force equivalent to mg sin theta to bring it slowly upward. So the force that we have to overcome is mg sin theta. So the force that we have to apply is same as mg sin theta and the displacement that will bring about is 5. So it is 5 mg sin theta. Let's find out what's theta. Tan theta would be, uh, uh, for that matter we can directly calculate sin theta. Sin theta using trigonometry, sin is perpendicular upon hypotenuse, sin theta is 3 by 5. Sin theta is 3 by 5. So the work we have to do is 5 mg into 3 by 5. That comes out to be 3 mg. Okay, so this is right, fine. So this is how you should think about. Work done in case of conservative force will be path independent. Okay, so you got the feel? Okay.